Welcome to Amiru. We got your gaming and esports hot topics, hot tweets, and the spiciest memes. I'm Marissa Roberta. And I'm Brody Moore, and this is how the show is going to work. Producer Tyler's got two minutes on the board for four topics, which we will present and possibly argue. Luckily for all of us, there is a mute button if needed to mute the other for, for 30 seconds, yeah. and I promise you, I'll try to use it today. You seem very authoritative today. I'm excited. This Listen, is the law. <laughs> we like you in chat when you call us out when we're wrong, and of course, praise us when we're spitting true. So let's get to it, shall we? Mm-hmm. Brace yourselves because we're diving right in to what's already one of the biggest stories of the year: Tifu versus Phase. In a bombshell story, the Hollywood Reporter revealed that Fortnite streamer Tifu is suing Phase Clan. Tifu alleges that Phase takes up to 80% of his income and also pushed him to engage in underage drinking and dangerous stunts for videos. In its own statement, FaZe categorically denies Tifu's claims, stating it has only taken 20% of his brand revenue. To add more fuel to the fire, apparently Tifu never contacted FaZe before he filed a lawsuit. Brody, we don't know all the details, okay, that's for the contract. An that's an important thing to know here. Exactly. We've only seen the complaint that was listed mm -hmm. online. Uh, I'm assuming you have many opinions about this, and because of that, I'd like, I like to your hear assumption. what you have to say. So uh, I don't even know if two minutes is long enough, uh, yeah. really, to talk about this. This is a huge thing. First off, uh, you know, just with the, the bare bones, again, keep in mind we don't know everything, mm. I'm already phasing, uh, or sorry, siding on the uh, side of phase right now. It's like um, choice words. Yeah, this is, this is, uh, this is tough uh, because you know there are things. Maybe they did uh, you know push him to do bad things underage, drinking, whatever. That's a whole different story. Mm. Uh, but when it comes to the contract, 20%. There's no way anyone it would say 80%. That is just false. I'm pretty sure uh, it came out. I think Slasher put it out there that it was maybe 80% of um, uh, revenue on like. Uh, merch that's been sold through yeah. a stream, right. which to me is reasonable because all you're doing is putting up a thing where people can link through, mm -hmm. right? You're not doing too much and getting 20% of sales of someone else's stuff, yeah. that's still pretty good. There's no way, and, and they came out and said that they didn't take any of his winnings and stuff so far, which I honestly no, actually but, believe. But Tifu has openly said that as well. You know what Tifu's doing? They don't take any of his, what, what is it, what? Tifu wants out of the contract, and guarantee you FaZe doesn't want out of the contract because it's good for them to have their name out there. Mm -hmm. So we went to a lawyer and said, I want out of this contract, I'm really awkward, so I'm not gonna go talk to FaZe anymore, that's why I came out of nowhere behind their back, mm -hmm. and he's just trying to go through the lawyer route and let the lawyers do his talking for him. He well, doesn't they, want in that contract anymore, so he's being a dick about it. Well, there was that's interesting language in that complaint, okay? For First of all, the fact that this is a whole complaint brought forward seemingly so that the lawyers out there also will be making more money from this too. I'm not siding with FaZe or Tifu in this at all. I understand both sides. I also feel like this is a, a door now that's been opened for so many streamers because this is the complaint that they're, they're saying that different orgs are taking advantage of streamers who just want their name out there. They just want to be signed to something. They just want recognition for the, what they're doing, their craft. So orgs, big orgs, big money are taking advantage of these streamers and maybe, maybe they're making them do things they don't want to do so they can get little content for whatever it is their YouTube channels or other things maybe he was having to drink underage maybe he didn't want to but maybe he did we don't know anything we only know a he said he said situation that all the fans honestly have been siding with everybody is just pointing fingers right now on Twitter and it's driving me insane you guys we don't Marissa. know everything so just chill we have a timer respect Tyler's timer okay but that does bring up uh, more stuff. Tifu's lawsuit brings into question the power that streamers and esports orgs hold. FaZe has a ton of streamers under its roster, and many of them have extremely large followings individually. We've seen streamers leave orgs, such as when Shroud left Cloud9, to strike it on their own, you know? And considering that streamers can earn upwards of 50,000 US dollars an hour for streaming a game with deals, many don't see a benefit of joining an org. Mm. Now that we got into the next one, holy moly, not that I disagreed Sorry. with you, yeah. but we gotta, we gotta respect the time. Um, do, you, is this, do streamers now actually hold more power than these orgs? You know, before it was that deal where you signed, uh, you signed up to uh, whatever, like an MCN or MCM or whatever, just yeah. it's like, whoa, I'm important now. I signed a Wait, contract. MCM is a Man Crush Monday. Man Crush Monday, not quite here. It's uh, it's multi <laughs> multi channel network. Sorry, MCM multi channel network. Okay, okay. It sounds like you said MCM. This is Tuesday. Like, Man Crush Monday, this and is... we're past that. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't put you up for a Man Crush Monday. BT Dubs. That's, uh, that's rude. No, I don't think that. I don't. I don't know. I don't think that streamers technically have the upper hand just yet because a lot of them, especially smaller streamers, are still struggling. And they mm -hmm. would, if an org reached out to them, they would jump on it 100, no matter what the contract said. They would for sure sign on the dotted line. This is a thing, and this is the actual problem, is that 
young streamers, young people, streamers everywhere, just want recognition and they'll do whatever they can to get it, okay? Mm -hmm. So that means that, unfortunately, you may be sending a deal with the devil, but maybe some orgs out there really do look out for your best interests. We don't really know, but I also know that orgs look after money and they want more money. So if you can yeah. generate money for them, they will sign you. But do they you. have if the power over these they streamers won't. now, though? Like, who's, who's holding the mantle at this point? I mean, like, have we seen a shift that, you know, it's maybe going to come to a point where nobody's going to accept these signings from orcs because like why would I? I'm making enough money anyways oh no there are plenty of people out there it's the same deal with like you know you and I do hosting things mm -hmm. we, we host gigs on the side as that well but like that is true and we do that for a fee people have to pay us a fee to to host. Well, you get paid. But shut up, Brody. But there are some people out there that just want to host, and so they go and they ask if they can do it, and they'll do it for free. Now that's taking money out of our mouths as professionals, right? So yeah. this is this is also similarly related to this, where streamers out there will just sign things, even though like maybe they're not that good or whatever it is, but they'll do it and they'll do it for free because an org is signing me. It's very exciting, right? So they're taking <sighs> money now out of pros' mouths. Uh, if you if you see the trickle down effect here, it happens with orgs too. So we'll see what happens. We don't know what's going to happen. Right TLDR, now. just be smart, guys. Uh, if you sign, TLDR. even if you do sign an 80% contract revenue going to the org, that's your fault. Don't sign bad contracts. At the end of the day, read them. At the end of the day, kind of early, but still, <laughs> I guess you hold it a little bit longer since last time. Listen, we've seen plenty of video game developers and publishers get in on the film business, and now it's PlayStation's turn. Sony announced over the weekend that it would be launching a film and TV production division called PlayStation Productions. The production company will develop and produce products internally, as opposed to licensing them out. And we already know what the first project will be, a TV series based on Twisted Metal. Brody, is this doomed to fail, or do you think this is amazing that PlayStation is actually stepping up and doing their own thing? Interesting. Um, well, so one of the biggest things we know when it comes to video game, movies, TV shows, whatever, is they're usually hot trash. They're usually not good at all. Why, though? Because, and this is why this could be a good thing, you're generally licensing that out to people that have no idea of the history and the story that you've built behind these characters, any of the character development you've done, anything with that franchise, they usually have no idea. They may have like a consultant for some things, but they're, they want to create their own stories and also translating that mm. to film is different. It's interactive media to passive media. It is a hard thing to translate between the two, right? So this could be a good step giving Sony control over any of their IPs. Right, so because they'll remain and retain <coughs> that control yeah. over those characters. So you're saying that Sega should have then made an in-house production of Sonic the Hedgehog movie like that could have happened too. I don't know Sonic's it doesn't it seems to not matter who has control of Sonic whether it's a video <laughs> game or a movie they have not been I don't know how that franchise is still going I think it's just a bunch of Sonic hopefuls they're like we really 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 hope that one day this will be good again and it's just it's like it's like being like a Leafs fan you know are you serious you pretty you're just what, what always going to be disappointed anything? no Get oh, over it. God, Move on. It, it burns though. It gives me indigestion <laughs> when you say these things. Okay, just go. <laughs> well, okay. Oh, wait, no, we still have like, okay, 30 wait. more seconds. <laughs> I'm like, wait, no, just whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like Sony, uh, if, since it's in their hands, they will do. They will do this justice. Why wouldn't they? They have money. They have the money to build this production mm -hmm. company. Why wouldn't they put all their eggs in that basket? Their eggs are premium for Steam. They're, they're premium products. Why not? Mm -hmm. Twisted Metal? Like, yeah, have, we, have I been wanting a Twisted Metal series? No, not really, but I'll watch it. Yeah, I think, again, it's their IP. They know it inside out. Um, you know, it's different when they do Venom in that because, like, it, they may have not done the research, but yeah. they do know how to make movies, and this could be a good start. We'll see. Mm. Who knows? Mm. Anyways, Blizzard fans have long been asking for World of Warcraft Classic, a game that channels the experience of what it was like to play WoW before all of the expansions. Well, it's officially launching in August, but it's not quite what some players are expecting. <laughs> Namely, they've been reporting bugs that aren't actually bugs, but were in-game features for WoW at the time, like lower spawn rates for monsters. It's gotten to the point now where Blizzard had to release a full list of things that were not bugs <laughs> to get players to stop reporting them. <laughs> the, the, that's not hyphen bugs, by the way. These are these are not bugs. Not bugs, yeah. yeah th that's stop a, reporting stuff. Is this, this is a vanilla version of World of Warcraft. Like, what were you actually expecting? Well, I'm kind of curious. Do you think now that maybe there's a reason that they did these expansions? Is like they should have said, okay, Games have gotten better. We've learned from this. We should, we'll give you most of what Vanilla WoW is, but implement some of the things that we've learned from? Or j is it a good idea? Just go straight back to it. Or we're going to see now new expansions for <laughs> Vanilla WoW. Oh my god. This it's going to branch off now. Okay, but was this not 
was this not perpetuated by fans asking yes. for this? And this then they forgot right? so how this, better the games have gotten. Exactly. This is what I'm saying. It was perpetuated by fans wanting the original version. Like, no, none of the updates. Just give me back basic, wow, this is what I want. This is what we asked for. Okay. So this is the thing, though. This is the thing. Fans should not dictate. And we're seeing it with Game of Thrones as well. Like, a petition is being signed right now to remake the whole final season. You guys, that is crazy. That's absolutely insane. Yeah, who's funding we that? Get, <laughs> no. The people that make this game could do whatever the F they want with this game. It's their game game let them do it you guys they, they're giving you what you asked for which is the original bare bones version and you're complaining about that too there's too many bugs are you kidding me no they, they're oh my god people drive me absolutely insane you can't it doesn't matter what you do what you say there's yeah. always going to be a problem and that's what really bugs me it's just the irony of, of nostalgia i suppose you think it was always better but in all reality it wasn't because there was gradual changes in these games that made them better now i fully can see a whole new branch of expansions as I mentioned before coming out. You're gonna have this timeline of story and Blizzard's like, ah, well, let's just, you know, we'll change a few things here and there and all of a sudden you're paying for new expansions again. You're hooked <laughs> all back into the process <laughs> once again uh, as World of Warcraft why, fans. Why, people, oh my gosh, just absolutely, like, why? What, why? Yeah, you I want thought, Vanilla thought, WoW, you got Vanilla WoW. That's just, the end yeah, of the story. And it's, and it's vanilla. Stop sending in your friggin' bugs because there are no bugs. This is what came with the game. Like, deal with it. Alrighty, now it's time to move on because it's time to check in with streamers in Clip It. Our first clip comes from XQC, Ugh. who doesn't always know what he's talking about, but we have to admit he brings up a good point about captures. If I try to log in into like a trash website, like a big website that is kind of trash, like Twitter, Facebook, like a huge website that is, it's really bad if you get hacked, right? There, there, there's gonna be no like, no capture, nothing, right? But if I log in some trash, random, like Neopets or, or Newgrounds, I have three capture layers, dude. dude. Find the dog in this picture, find the six buses, find the three crosswalk, find, find the nine street lights, two taxis, six airplanes, Yo, dog! Yeah, I'm trying to log in, not doing an IQ test. <laughs> Man. Okay, so for, <laughs> first off, got to call him out. If you think that's what an IQ test is, you're probably not going to score very high. But secondly, I, I agree that it is super frustrating, but you got to understand what CAPTCHA is doing now. CAPTCHA, I guarantee you, is selling this data as uh, training for AI. You're helping mm. the AI train. I guarantee you they're selling to the companies that have large AIs, or they have their own AI, because they got to make money somehow. CAPTCHA as a company, it, it's a company. They have yeah. to make money. They're not making money by you clicking on pictures. So, it, well, I get why it's there, but yeah, no, I really don't want it. When I'm trying to log in, Freaking let me log in, it's 10 minutes later, and I'm still not logged in. It's so like, true. it's so freaking frustrating. Uh, yeah, you know what, I, I have never thought about it that way at all. Yeah, I hate, to, like, find the crosswalks, find the traffic light. Like, okay, thank you, I found all the traffic lights, I don't need to do it again. I and mean, you miss really, one, and then it's gotta load again, and it takes yeah. 10 minutes to load sometimes? I didn't really Jesus. think it would definitely be, be just training AI with this information. Mm -hmm. uh, Brody Moore. We're already He's making always the, thinking. We're always making the robots take over us. Oh, baby. Okay, at the R6 Pro League Season 9 Finals, they announced that Season 10's final will be live in Japan. And to say that Norrengo coach Kizoku is excited would be a bit of an understatement. What does it mean to you? What does it mean to all of the Norrengo players that the biggest Pro League, our 10th season, is going to be in your home? Can I have a Michael game? Uh, I'm so happy! Because and uh, Japanese season community is very, very big. And my stomach is big too! Oh, boom, 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 boom! Ramen sushi! Ramen sushi! Sushi ramen! What just happened? Uh, can we please be friends? Oh, I'm like, oh my yeah. god, that was incredible. I love that he's like chanting ramen sushi. Uh, sushi ramen. I don't know what happened, but it happened. Jesus, I, absolutely everything just happened. Yeah, okay, Brody, if you're not, can you actually promise me the next okay. time you host, because you're hosting the next RLCS LAN, I'm assuming, okay. can you please beatbox? Can you I don't beatbox? know if they want that. No, what do you mean? You think anybody was expecting that? That was so incredible. You beatbox and start your own whatever, or you beatbox and whoever's okay, with so you get Lawler who's, who's to lay down James a rhyme. Ba James Bot loves rapping. 
So oh my gosh. if James Blatt's on the desk, maybe we'll, we'll work a, a little thing I together. I mean, it's going to spend so many cringes, I know. If we, but got, if we have to, a fill for anything. You're like, if we have to, we have to. <laughs> Listen, it truly is time for the best time of the day when we scroll the Twitters and bring you all the things the pros bless us with on their timeline. And today, we're kicking things off with an extra special tweet as it falls into the category of profound thoughts. Leafex says, feeling oh, cute God. might delete later. You Why would you do this? You, you forgot the E, man. No, that's how you type it. Oh, you yeah? gotta be extra, Mimi. Okay, Bro. wait. I <laughs> Yo, want, that no, no. Off. Listen, I need you to please walk us through the process of how you decided in your evening that you would take a box, an empty box, cut it so it fit your head. Like, how did that even form in your brain? Well, I mean, is, is there a process? It more of just like happened. I mean, someone <laughs> took the last uh, Canada Dry soda out of there. And, uh, Not sponsored by so Canada Dry. I, I had, yeah, I had, the, I had the box and I looked at it and I'm like, huh, you know, there's a hole in it. I could probably put my head in it. But then I tried and it didn't quite fit. So I had to, I had to pop it open a bit more. And later on, actually, if you scroll down, uh, I, I turned into a full face mask. I got little eye holes cut out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and I look like an alien. Oh my God. Uh, Tyler wants me to just shout out Camille because you did choose Canada Dry over Schweppes in that scenario. Well, I didn't again. choose it. I wasn't drinking it. Someone else did. I was using the box. I okay. was making the most of the materials given to me. Okay. I also want to take note that Brody's head is abnormally small <laughs> for him to fit in a box like that. That's insane. I have a tiny head. Thank you for pointing that out. No problem. Um, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's, now it's time to, for some real profound thoughts. This one is from CSGO Pro Sicko, who just moved into Greyhound Gaming's Player House and got a little housewarming gift from one of its residents. Feeling very welcomed in the Greyhound household. Yo. Look at that eye contact. This house, or this cat, is over roommates. This cat wants no one else living in its digs. Oh my god. Okay, here's the thing though, like, cats will do that. Like, they won't go in their little box when they're upset. Like, they've got a beef Because cats you. are dicks. No, I know, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're in their territory now. So basically, he was not welcome at all. I love that, like, you're new here, deal with this. This is mine. Just, like, take a big dookie. Like, the cat literally just dropped trow. Um. Does that give him permission to do the exact same thing now? Oh I would God, stare yes. at the cat right back, drop trowel, drop a deuce. <laughs> Whose house Top is this? Top tier. See, then you guys take a photo. That would be cat, my next the cat tweet. has to take a photo of you. <laughs> my, my Twitter account has now turned into a meme account. <laughs> Fair enough. Our last profound thought is a story about a guy standing in front of a girl desperate for a hookup, so he opens his phone to prove his fame. Rich Campbell, everybody. <laughs> He says, I'm flirting with a girl at a bar. Please like this tweet so she thinks I'm famous. If you retweet, I'll invite you to the wedding. Jesus. <laughs> he got That's... so many likes and retweets on that. Here's Richard. the thing. Here's the thing is you have to be so careful with those kind of tweets. Why? Because like that could have fallen. Even the slightest change in wording on that tweet and that could have fallen. People are going to be like, eh, that's kind of lame. But it's just the perfect wording that people love it, you get the right person to retweet it, you hit that phony bone of that person and it blows up. Yes. Using uh, social media is next level for flirting. I don't know. I mean, you could also just use your winning personality. <laughs> like, and you know, you Who's need to Who's got time phone. for that? I have what? to develop a personality? I'm a gamer, I play you, games. Pretty, you also put boxes on your head. Exactly. There's my personality for you. And <laughs> <laughs> let's move on because it's time to get to some crowd control. We collect internet things and we put them right here. I want to keep things VR themed today because why not? I can. This is what you get when you take away the cables. Now this is sick. The Quest, this is the, um, the uh, Oculus Quest. No cables now. Amazing. You get a free play space to go out and walk around. You, the only issues you're gonna need a spotter because you could Definitely. run into stuff still. But this is what I want. Imagine a whole field. Look at this. You're just out there with freedom. I don't know, buddy. You can I, do I, barrel rolls. I don't know. Oh, do geez. barrel roll. Oh my goodness. Can't do that in your house now, can you? That's insane. That so, is the future gaming. I want to be out there with like 20 other people in like a big battle. You would all run into each other, and you would. Well, all you can hurt. see each other in the game. I just don't imagine a game, like, I can't imagine even enjoying a moment of that. Like, why? What a hater. Can we, no, like, for no, real right or, now? Or maybe, like, it's just not the right game what for me. What a VR like, hater. Like, there's got to be, like, if I, was to, if I was able to do that inside the world of Animal Crossing, like, that's a different story. 
Yeah. That's a completely different story. So? Were those, like, that kind of game? I just don't want to be outside. Also, like... The point is, the fr- I don't want to be outside. I will agree with... Okay, I, right? I feel that's a valid point. Okay, fair. Case closed. Listen, <laughs> I guess I will play along with your VR theme, Brody, because okay. sometimes people jump into VR games like VR Chat just because they want some friends and maybe some hugs. Just make sure you pick the right game to do that. Hug. I want a hug, okay? Okay. Oh, no remorse. St- Stone Cold Killer. I love the other guy walks up to him at the end. And he's just yeah. like, bro, how you do this? How you do him like this? Bro, what's going on? Uh, well, why would you ask for a hug in that game, though? That's his own Because default. it's VR and you can do whatever you want. That's the beauty of it. it like, how do you not understand chat. how I amazing do. VR is because of these things? And then you get to see right. the emotions of people. You can do that in real life, though. But real life sucks. We already sucks. live enough. I feel like we live so much in, in our video games. Like, we sit in front of the screen all the time and play video games. Why are we now immersing our whole selves and our whole bodies into these worlds when we have a beautiful world that we live in right now? Maybe when the world is maybe when the world is ending and we've got nothing good happening on the outside and we're all going to die, maybe then we'll go into VR and live there then. Well, maybe but I'm looking now, at it too far into the future because I'm yeah, already maybe. in that spot. I will no. give you... The real reason, and to end everything off, I want to show you the absolute real reason for VR existing and why it's so amazing. Thanks okay. to Molly on YouTube, we have, well, this. Yeah, 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 oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this is America! <laughs> Don't get you slipping up! Because of my area! <laughs> I got the strap! Yeah! I, I got the camera! Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go into this! Yeah, yeah, this is real. Whoa! Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go get the bag. <laughs> <laughs> the asthma attack at the end seals the deal. That is the absolute reason why we have VR and not okay. real life. You know? Okay, but then you just have to wait for these amazing moments. Like that, that was so much fun. I loved all of that, every second of it. But then you're you're just taking a gamble that maybe something like that will happen in a game that you're in. I mean, you're kind of taking that gamble by living too. It's just like. <laughs> So maybe something in life will be amazing. Who knows, right? But you know, you don't know. And VR, you can put yourself into a weird. Set. They're on a boat with guns. It's military, and and this guy's just singing. This is America, throwing guns around. You don't get that in real life. Ah, uh, okay, that was fun. I guess once in chat, if you like VR and you want to live in VR, I kind of want to know what you think. Uh, but that's it for unmuted. This is actually the last time Brody and I will be on the desk together this week. I'm gonna miss you. Thank goodness. Oh, I mean, I'll miss you too. All right, hit us up on all our socials just to say hi and send us stuff. Someone type in exclamation mark socials right now in chat. We'll see you next time.